Now that Whitley's opened the door to everything that's gone on, he starts to have these memories from even his childhood back in Texas. In my investigative work, I usually find when a person has had an abduction experience, when they get regressed or they get further interviewed, they realize that they've had a lot of other weird experiences that they couldn't explain as a child, or they go back to their family and, and they ask, has anything happened to you? And usually, 80% of the time, there's always some kind of generational connection to these otherworldly beings. When the book Communion came out, something really interesting that happened with Whitley's family was that his uncle came forward. He was a colonel in the Air Force at the time. He was present at Wright Field when the debris from the Roswell incident was brought in. He asked me to come see him at the Air Force retirement place where he lived. Whitley's uncle would confide in Whitley that we were told by the general not to talk about the Roswell wreck, but he saw it and said, this was otherworldly. This is no weather balloon. And just forget these stories that it didn't happen. It did happen. And then he introduced me to his commanding officer, General Exxon. General Exxon said to me, and I'm quoting him, everyone from Truman on down knew that what we had found was not of this world within 24 hours of our finding it. And there is a memo called the Twining Memo, where General Twining describes the functionality of these craft, and it's exactly the same functionality that you see in the Tic Tac and Gimbal videos. Well, if there's a good thing, it's rotated. Written years ago, and General Twining said that he had not only seen the bodies, but had in encountered a living being that was one of these aliens, as he called them. If the uncle was there and he's like, things are real, nothing happened to the uncle, but the idea is now the beans are targeting the family. was vehement about it. She wanted to continue to go because she felt like we needed to do this. We needed to, to understand this as best we could. When Whitley's son is seven years old and on spring break, they come up here for a few days, which is very normal for them. I would go downstairs every night and check on him. I sometimes would sit outside the door of his room with a shotgun. And then one night, at three in the morning, Whitley wakes up startled, and he's panicked. And his first instinct is to run downstairs and check on his son. He opens the door to the bedroom, and his son is gone. You can imagine the terror. Your son is now missing. Something in Whitley tells him to go outside to the backyard. And when he goes out there, he sees this craft just above the tree line, and it's huge. It's, it's filling the sky. And the thought occurs to him, oh my god, they've taken my son. It looked like he was in the bed at first, but when I went near the bed, it, I couldn't find him. And I ran outside, and there was this huge star in the sky. And these two tall men came toward me. Something inside of Whitley tells him to go back inside, back into the cabin. And as he reaches for the doorknob, there's almost like this static charge to it. But he doesn't care. He's got to get inside. The next thing I recall is being back in the house and finding he was there in the bed. You have to be relieved that your child is back in their bed. But you also have to be terrified, because did he get hurt? Did something happen to him? The next morning, everything seems OK with Whitley's son. He seems to be acting pretty normal, but the discussion is strange. He wrote the most lovely little poems about the night. 
We want to go out beyond the quasars to see what's there. Reality is God's dream. He said that. He said he had seen this eye looking down at him, and he had floated in the woods. And he said, is it a dream, Dad? Whitley, I, ca I can't imagine what he must have felt like inside, but, but he just kind of reassured his son that everything was OK. He didn't want to scare his own child. I let it go, we, you know, because we had decided that we would not pursue this with our son, because at the time, if my imagination was running rampant, we didn't want to infect our little boy with that. It's Whitley's birthday, and he starts to have some strange sensations, like, like feeling this electric charge. And the electrical devices around him are going haywire. His radio's doing weird things. This strange image is on his TV, and that's when he realizes this is not just at night anymore. This isn't just when I'm asleep. This is around me all the time. Hudson Valley is, is a hotbed for people that have been abducted, for UFOs in the sky, for any kind of experience. I was driving home from a church social in the village of Brewster, which is about 55 miles north of New York City. And I looked up, and there was lights just parked in the sky. And it was quite spectacular. I uh, pulled my car over and got out. And uh, right next to Interstate 84, the whole interstate had come to a stop. Now people are actually getting out of their cars and pointing at this object hanging over the interstate. I looked up into the sky. And there was, I don't even know what it was, but it was, it was so ginormous that it was not a blimp. You know, some people were saying, oh, I saw a V. I saw some neighbors of a, an adjoining house nearby. And I'm like, look up, look up, look up. So I was coming south on uh, 87. And uh, I had a flash of light hit me in the eyes while I'm driving the truck. It was strange, because it wasn't just a regular beam of light from a car or anything like that. It was a light from a long distance. And all of a sudden, I see out of the side of my eye in the sky was this big ship. 